<sighs> what it do, YouTube? It's your boy, Geek Samurai, coming to you back with another video, man. In this video, I'm doing Season 8, Episode 6, Recap Review. And I'm not happy. <sighs> At first, I was considering, should I even do this recap, bro? Should I even waste my time? But I want to give y'all my honest opinion on how this ended. I want to come to y'all and let y'all know how pissed I am. There is no excitement here. For this last particular episode, there is no excitement. And producers, writers of the show, D&D &D have dropped the ball on this season. I was with it. I was with this season all the way from season, from episode one of season eight to episode five. I was on board. Even when they went with the whole Danny being a mad queen, I was on board. But after watching this season finale, I am not on board anymore. Cut me off the team. Bench me. Make me the freaking water boy. I am not a part of this Game of Thrones team anymore, man. This season, this episode, this season finale was supposed to be a culmination of all of these episodes into one fantastic season finale. This season finale was very, very disappointing. I was okay in this season to have Arya kill the Night King. I was even okay with them making my Queen Danny the Mad Queen. And killing Cersei and burning all the king. I was with it. Yes, it's six episodes. Yes, you know, a lot of people were upset about how she became the Mad Queen because they didn't build on that. And yes, a lot of people were upset because of these story arcs were cut so short. Story arcs, characters that we followed from since... Game of Thrones Season 1, Episode 1. I've been a big fan of Danny since Game of Thrones Season 1, Episode 1. Bruh. Daenerys Stone Born Targaryen. I always, I'm, I'm Team Targaryen through and through, baby. Through and mother freaking through. Fire and blood, that red and black is what I'm about, son. From the point of this episode where Danny was talking to the Dothraki, talking to the Unsullied, bigging up, bigging up Grey Worm, giving him titles of being Master of War and all this stuff. You know? Taking Tyrion and, and, and making him her prisoner. You know what I'm saying? I was like, this is going to build up to something. This is going to be good. Maybe Tyrion might die. You know what I'm saying? Just That's just another way for Danny to show her power. And I was with the whole Mad Queen. I was with it. But then we freaking get to the throne room of the Red Keep of King's Landing. Where clearly in season two, Danny had those visions of her not touching the throne. Not touching the throne. She does not touch the throne ever. So in this season, she finally touches the throne. This episode, she, the season for now, she finally touches the throne. And then what happens? We get into the background, in the four, in the background where we have John coming through the dark, and he comes to reason with Danny to ask her to show mercy to not only Tyrion but. To, to, to whoever else that she wants to liberate. And in her mind, liberate is only one way. Fire and blood. Then Danny pleads with him, listen to reason. There's no more mercy. I need to take out everybody. Either they follow me. If they don't, they get burned. 
And we know that this is how Danny was going to be because she did that in season seven when she took out Randall Tarly and, and Dick on Tarly. They, they decided not to follow her. They only know one true king, which is Cersei. Randall went out like a, like a G, got burned alive, whatever. Dick on right there. We knew that. But for her to plead with John, for John to follow her and to rule by her side, It was the most disappointing scene ever in Game of Thrones history. They finally kissing everything. They finally get into that. And all this happened from the scene from before when John went to talk to Tyrion to convince Tyrion to follow Danny. That did happen. All of a sudden, the guy, the one guy who's supposed to be a dummy now, who is the, the foolish man ever in all of Westeros, his voice finally rings out truth. And in that one little conversation, he finally convinces John to, to turn on Danny. So what does he do? He's passionately kissing her. He's, he's bringing her in close. And what does he do? Takes his little feeble, his little small, insequential dagger and stabs her in the heart. Kills her. I did not want it. I did not feel it. I did not enjoy it. And I was pissed that my girl Danny's gone. I was pissed that that's how she's going to die. If all along they knew that, that John was going to kill Danny, why didn't they do that before the Night King? Night, now I wish the Night King was the last villain instead of Cersei. Now I wish that. Because John could have killed Danny before the Night King approached and then we would have gotten Lightbringer. Azora High. We would have gotten that. I am not happy the way this ended. So now John becomes a prisoner to the Unsullied. The Unsullied are now ruling over all of King's Landing. That's their city. John and Tyrion are prisoners now. And here we go. It's like a few weeks or maybe a month later. We have all the houses meeting up in the dragon pit. Same scenario like in season seven. We see Yara there. It looked like the Dornish people are back from Dorn. We see one guy dressed up like a Dornish man. Dornish king. Then we see Arya. We see Bran. We see Sansa. We see freaking Gendry. We see all we see Sam. Everybody's back. And the Unsullied bring Tyrion out of the prison. They were supposed to bring John to Tyrion come walk it out. Now they need to decide who's going to be the king of Westeros. They need to decide what's going on. Isn't John Aegon Targaryen the one true king, the rightful heir to the throne? D&D &D don't give a shit. They negated that. When they said that at the end of season seven, if you watch those who have the DVDs and the Blu-rays of Game of Thrones... You, if you watch the extra footage, behind the scene footage or whatever, they said that John is the rightful heir to the throne. They're not going by the books. Who's the rightful heir to the throne? That's them after they talked to George R. R. Martin. That's who they believe was the rightful heir to the throne. So you just negated your whole belief. If John is the rightful heir to the throne, why would you make him a prisoner after he killed Danny? Shouldn't he be the rightful heir to, to Westeros? So now all these men, it looked like Sansa's uncle was standing up about to talk. She said, sit your ass down. Samuel Tarly's saying, oh, why don't we all decide who should be king? Because Tyrion brought up that idea. So Samuel Tarly stands up and said, instead of picking a king or queen, why don't we all choose? And it looked like Sweet Robin is there. He grew up. And then they all decide. They all decide. That the man who's broken, the man who's in a wheelchair crippled all his life from since a little boy, the king of all of Westerosi is going to be Bran. Brandon Stark. Because in the books, there's Bran the Builder who helped with the building the wall and everything. Now we have a new title for him. Bran the Broken. First in his name. King of the Andos. 
and the king that will guard the realms of men. And the king of not seven kingdoms, but six kingdoms. The only thing I, I loved in this episode was the fact that Sansa is the queen, not Lady of Winterfell, Queen Sansa of Winterfell, queen in the north. That's the only thing I was, and, and, and when they revealed that, when they put on her crown and she put on that, that dress, that robe that shows the werewolf trees design and everything, I wasn't even feeling that. Like at the end of season six, when they crowned John King in the north, I felt that. That was an emotion. That was just, oh, when them guys unseed their swords and said, King in the north, I felt that. From House Glover all the way to everybody else, to the to the Mormons, to the freaking Car Starks, the Umbers, all of them were saying, King of the North, and they just kept saying it. I felt that when they revealed that Sonic was Queen of the North, Queen of the North, I didn't feel it. Arya don't want to stick around in Westeros no more. She said, what's west of Westeros? That's where I'm going. Then we get to the scene where Tyrion, he's now hand to the king. And he's in the Red Keep or whatever. In one of the actual meeting quarters where they all sit and they gather around and meet. So he's there fixing chairs and crap. And he's there trying to sit in his chair. Here comes the man walking in, Ma Maester Samuel Tarly now. I thought he was a lord. I thought he was lord of House Tarly. Now he's a maester. You have Sir Davos. You have Sir Lady Bran of, of Toth. Podrick coming in, wheeling in the king. Here comes Bran. Now he's Lord of Coin because he has High Garden. Waste of a scene, man. That scene didn't even need to happen. They all trying to look for the dragon. Where have you last spotted the dragon? What do we do now? How do we rebuild? All the stuff that's going on was not necessary, bruh. It could have happened differently. Yes, the Iron Throne is burnt. Drogon destroyed that joint. That's him unleashing all that pain from Danny being killed. But they, they didn't build a new throne for, for the cripple, for Bran the Broken. Where's the actual throne room? That's his throne room where he just gets wheeled in. Oh, this, this season finale was disappointing. And I'm a diehard Game of Thrones fan, but D&D &D dropped the ball on this season finale, bro. It's like they didn't care about this season. They didn't care about the, the, the character story arcs anymore, bro. And I'm pretty sure you guys can relate. Now, I was on social media. I was on Twitter, and I seen those petitions. Those petitions, 500,000. It's probably grown to like 600,000, maybe more now. That's half a million people who want to redo this whole season. After this season finale, I am with you 100%. Now I'm interested to read the, these books, man. Because now I'm looking forward to the books because the books are probably going to have a better ending than this freaking TV show. I knew this, this TV show was going downhill when season seven came out with only seven episodes. And season eight was only going to get six. I knew that this show was going downhill. They were going to rush through it. Every season from season one to season six is all ten episodes. If you're going to finish that season eight, do ten episodes. Season seven, ten episodes. Continue that trend. Don't change it. Don't shorten it. Nothing. So we waited two years Two long, grueling years to get a season eight like this. And y'all end the season finale like this. It's too much energy for me to even want to be mad. Too much energy to waste. To, it hurt my brain. It hurt my heart. I'm just disappointed. Now I'm happy that it's come to an end. There's nothing left to look forward to. I don't even know if HBO is still going to do the prequel. They have to find producers and writers for that. 
We knew this. We knew this from season seven. Before even season seven began, after season six, we knew D&D wouldn't be done with Game of Thrones. Even the characters, even the actors and actresses themselves, they wanted to be done with Game of Thrones. <sighs> Squad, I'm disappointed. I I'm thoroughly upset. I was looking forward to the season finale. I even worked last night, and I wasn't ashamed to work. I was, I'm was, i making that money because if I was a full-time YouTuber, I wouldn't have to work. But I'm, I, I was like, yo, I'm going to work. I was about to bang out for this season for now. I'm glad I went to work. I'm glad I did not call out to miss out on money to go and watch this joint. For the way that it ended, I'm disappointed, man. D&D, you dropped the ball. And now y'all going to be going into Star Wars? I don't know, man. I think we... Bruh. Squad, I think Disney should stick with J.J. Abrams and do the next Star Wars. Do something different. I don't I don't trust in D&D. Because it's like when they come together and their heart's not in it anymore, they're going to give you crap. Just like these last two seasons, seven and eight, they rush through both seasons. Why not just make it one season? Call it season seven and be done. Don't even do an eight season. We could have gotten 10 episodes in season seven. And all this stuff that they rushed through in season eight could have been season seven. Go, they went beyond the wall. They went down to King's Landing, showed Cersei that there was a there, there's the dead is a, is real. That dragons are real. And they could have did all of this stuff that happened in season eight. Everything that was rushed, everything that culminated, everything that happened, could have been in season seven. We did not need a season eight. It was a waste of two years when diehard fans was looking forward to this joint. Yes, I'm ranting. Now the anger is coming out, bruh. Because I'm, I'm just... <sighs> and I'm so pissed the way Danny died. The way her, her story ended. I'm so pissed. You go through all that trouble to make her the Mad Queen in the last episode. And you just kill her off just like that. Y'all know I'm a Danny fan. You see the poster behind me. Y'all know Daenerys Stormborn is my queen. Not just my queen. I'm House Targaryen since day one. <sighs> D&D, you failed me. You failed 500,000 plus Game of Thrones fans. I'm about to go back and I was on Twitter. I was on Twitter. I was on Twitter. If y'all want to look at my Twitter, go look at King of the North 3. Hit me up on that joint. Don't worry. I'm about to do a Geek Samurai Twitter account. I'm about to set all that up, get my Geek Samurai publicity out there. But right now, that's my Twitter handle right now, at King of the Ring 3. Follow your boy. But anyway, I was on Twitter, and I was ranting and raving about that, son. I was like, oh, you bastards signing this petition. Y'all know what y'all talking about. The season finale is going to change all that. Season finale comes out. I'm pumped. I'm amped. I got the volume all the way up at 100. I got the surround sound going. I'm playing the joint. 10, 15 minutes into the season finale, you kill Danny. You just, oh, here, John. John, take his knife. Shank. That's it. He's a Targaryen. That's his message for her. Fire and blood, right? Here's the blood part. And he stabs her to death. She bleeds from the mouth and nose, and that's it. I was actually on my phone on this last episode. I did. I just wanted it to be done. I was so mad. I was not invested. I did not want to pay attention anymore. I will always be a Amelia Clark fan. I will always ride for who she's the one who plays. If y'all didn't know, and y'all should know, Amelia Clark plays Daenerys Stormborn. I've seen every movie that she's been in. Me before you. You know what I'm saying? Voice from a stone. You know what I'm saying? She was in Terminator Genesis. You know what I mean? I've watched everything. I've watched Solo. I'm a diehard Amelia Clark fan. Amelia Clark is everything to me, yo. Facts. Y'all can rant and rave all y'all want about her being a, uh, she's not a good actress or whatever. Y'all bugging. 
And for her to go out like this playing Danny, that was it. That was me out of it. That was me out of the, the, the season finale, out of the whole show. I am just so done. The best season was from one to five. You could get say six, the way how they revealed John's birthright, how they revealed John's true lineage. Season six was okay. But most of season six was already a training, you know what I'm saying, how to become a faceless man. That's what season six was all about. And then you had Battle of the Bastards at the end. That was good and everything. I, I do love those. But real Game of Thrones, true Game of Thrones was season one to five, man. Maybe six. But after you even could tell at the end of at the end of season six that that's when D and D them, they're all done. So I'm done talking about this. It's bittersweet, but it's more of an angry rant than anything. I'm more disappointed. It's more of a disappointing rant. Squad, y'all know I love my Game of Thrones. I'm not happy. I'm not. I'm pissed. Maybe it's a good thing that it's six episodes. Maybe a good thing that it's done. Because if they had stretched out this whole season, oh, man. And then they just didn't give a crap about people's storylines anymore. Oh, man. Glad it's done. Glad it's over. RIP to Game of Thrones, bro. Rest in peace. I don't even know if there's going to be a prequel. I don't even know if I want it. To show how everything started before season one, episode one. And it's crazy. I've been on this journey for a long time. I used to watch a show on stars called Spartacus. Even when the main character died on that show, I still watched everything. I got all the seasons. And as soon as that season finale ended, then Game of Thrones came out that very same year in 2011. Bruh, I was hooked from season one, episode one, and I rock with Game of Thrones since. Eight, nine years I've been on this show. And this is how you end it? D&D, &D, you're trash. I can't stand y'all. And I'm sorry. I do not want y'all on my Star Wars. I'm a diehard Star Wars fan too. And I know we need a break. J.J. Abrams is going to kill it. I hope he kills it with the Rise of the Skywalker. But then we're supposed to get like a three-year break. And then D&D is going to be doing the next trilogy. I don't even think I want that. I hope Disney, Bob Iger, who's like the CEO of Disney and everything, I hope he reconsiders that, bro. Talk to Kathleen Kennedy. D&D, I can't. I can't. Not if they're not, if not if they're going to do lazy riding and be be all, I don't care. Let's just hurry up and get it done. Not if they're going to be like that. Because Star Wars is near and dear to me, man. And if they're doing the over public, I'm pissed. I think what should Disney should do is go, if The Mandalorian does well on the Disney Plus app, this come out November 12th, y'all need, need to get that joint. If it does well, get Jon Favreau, who's doing, who's directing these episodes of The Mandalorian. Get Jon Favreau. Jon Favreau's done Jungle Book. He did the first Iron Man, and look what that has done for Disney. Look what that has done for the MCU. Get Jon Favreau on these trilogies, bro, because he will put his heart and soul into this joint. That's what I'm glad. I'm so freaking happy The Mandalorian's coming out. It's not a movie. It's gonna. I don't know how many episodes it's going to be. I cannot wait to find that out. I'm going to do a video for that in the future. I would love to see. I would love to see this TV show and see how it does. Everything Jon Favreau touches, it it blows up and it does well. He he. Like I said, he did first Iron Man. He did Jungle Book. Lion King is coming out this summer. And I'm telling you, The Lion King is going to make billions, bro. Billions. Those who are Daha Lion King's fan. I'm telling you, I'm a diehard Lion King fan. Aladdin is first, but Lion King is right there, bro. That is a given. You have not yet had a childhood until you watch The Lion King, bro. That's a fact. I think Disney, Bob Iger, they need to talk to these people. Kathleen Kennedy, get them in that writer's room. But like, we're not going to do D&D. Three, from three years from now, when they sit in that writer's room and, they, and they're talking to D&D, I hope that they get rid of them. Because they're going to look back on Game of Thrones Season 8. The whole season. And they're going to be like, yo, y'all rushed this joint. Even Season 7. Y'all rushed this joint. Look how y'all season finale ended it. I'm telling you. I'm, I'm thoroughly pissed. Thoroughly pissed. All right, y'all. Squad, y'all already know I'm done with this video. I'm done talking about this. It's over. It's more than bittersweet, man. It's disappointing. It's a, it's a flop. It's a failure to me, man. And I was really giving it hope. I was being optimistic. I can't. 
Not after this finale, bro. I can't. Anyway, leave y'all comments in the comment section. Post them. I want to know what y'all think about this season finale. If it was hot or not. To me, it was not. That makes the whole season an uh, epic fail. You didn't get me hyped. You didn't get me excited. It wasn't bittersweet. It was just an epic fail. That I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm pissed. It's over. I right, squad. Like, subscribe. Share Geek Samurai. And until then, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.